Dit is Papa Alfa 0, Eco Tengo Eco voor de Daily Minutes, nummer 1394, met een uitzending voor vandaag, 26 augustus 2018. Dit is het beeld van zondag. Uit tijdgebrek, ik had het gisteren wel beloofd, maar uit tijdgebrek heb ik opnieuw geen data. Het was die keuze, ik kan nu mogelijk op tijd zijn, als ik data doe, dan lukt dat zeker niet. Vandaag besteed ik de hele uitzending die in het Engels is aan een opvallend nieuwsbericht uit de Two Way Radio Podcast. Een nieuwsbericht dat grote gevolgen kan hebben. Het gaat hier over de verkoop in de VS, maar het zou ook consequenties kunnen hebben voor de Nederlandse situatie, omdat de apparaten wereldwijd verkocht worden. Het gaat over een recente afkeuring van een van de populairste portefeuilles op de markt, de UV5R+, die mogelijk in de VS dus niet meer toegestaan is. En dat op enkele eigenschappen die gelden voor nagenoeg alle portefeuilles die je tegenwoordig kunt kopen voor de amateurmarkt en professioneel. Today we have an excerpt of the most recent two-way radio podcast on a subject with possibly large consequences. The Baofeng UV5R and its variants are some of the most popular radios in the world, and with good reason. They are powerful, versatile, and, above all, they are cheap. On August 1, 2018, the FCC issued a citation to a U.S. distributor of Baofeng radios, stating that one of those variants, the Baofeng UV5R V2+, is an unauthorized RF device and is violating the Commission's rules. Yeah, Rick, this is this is pretty big news, wouldn't you say? This is a um, yeah. I, I kind of wasn't expecting uh, to see this um, this ruling or this citation. Basically, what we've got here is um, someone complained, um, who is nameless, <laughs> but uh, in 2013, someone complained that um, the UV5R that a company called baofengradio.us was selling violated its FCC authorization, essentially. This this radio is um, authorized under FCC Part 90, which is um, for business use. Mm -hmm. And the complaint said that the radio was capable of transmitting on frequencies outside of what's approved by that authorization and also that the the radio was transmitting at powers exceeding what was approved in its authorization. Um, I guess let's deal with the power issue first. Okay, because that's, that's the, a very that's interesting one. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting and it's easy because it seems pretty straightforward. I guess the UV5R advertises itself as being uh, able to transmit on one or four watts, mm-hmm. although if you look at the grant, um, issued by the FCC, it's authorized to transmit at 1.78 watts. Um, and I guess there was some back and forth between the distributor, BaofengRadio.us, and the Baofeng company, and they ended up saying, no, the radio can only transmit at one watt. It can't actually do four watts, so that uh, the FCC seemed happy with that. It's not actually mm-hmm. exceeding the, the power Interesting that they say at one watt, not 1.78 watts. <laughs> right. I guess we're below <laughs> yeah. uh, what it's um, approved for, but that's fine. Um, so what we're left with is the frequency issue. And this is something that um, I wonder if it's going to be a bigger problem from this. I mean, it, it definitely affects a lot of popular imported radios now. Um, I think this opens seems up like a big can of worms. It yeah, really does. I, I think so. Um I guess at the time of, well, the complaint was in 2013, and it was 2017, late 2017, before the FCC got around to addressing the complaint or doing anything about it. And um, They take their time. Yeah, reading from this citation, it sounds like there was some back and forth between the distributor and the FCC, and um, basically, initially, this radio was capable of transmitting on uh, one. 30 looks like initially it was able to transmit on uh, 136 um, up to something higher than than uh, you know 160 170 because what I have here is a list of, of frequencies from the document that it's basically stepping on other services like it's saying it can transmit on 136 to 137 which is aviation. Uh, 137 to 138, which is satellite communication. There's, there's a long list of them, and it would be boring to go through that. But um, In other words, it, it's capable of, of transmitting on frequencies outside 
the allotted frequencies for Part 90 for business use. That's what the FCC is saying, That's, and um, it's interesting how they how they're applying it in this case because when you look at a lot of what we would think of as legitimate business radios mm -hmm. like um, Motorola, Kenwood, ICOM, um, it's not unusual to see the capability to transmit in the 136 to 174 megahertz range which, on Which covers a lot VHF. of those, those other bands, those other frequencies. Now, it's possible that when you program in those frequencies, it gives you a message saying we're not you're not able to, to do this. I mean, I, I can't say that I've ever tried to program a business radio for aviation frequencies or satellite communication frequencies. We, we've so, never had a need to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't been asked to, and we wouldn't. But um, I'm not sure that it would work. But it seems like, based on what they're advertising, it's, I certainly see a lot of radio saying they'll transmit within this range. Yeah, I, I put up products all the time on our website that are all advertising or marketing themselves as being in the 136 to 174 range. Um, and also on the UHF side, you know, it's, there's a broad range on the UHF side from from 420 to, you know, 512 or, or 400 megahertz to 512 megahertz or something like that. That's a pretty broad range. It covers more than just the business frequencies. So it's interesting to me to see where specifically the FCC is drawing the line on what is allowed and what's not allowed, because at a first glance at this document, it seems like, wait a minute, there's radios that we think of that are legitimate that may be affected by this as well. Mm -hmm. But it seems that where they're drawing the line is something they're calling external controls. There's a footnote on page three of this document that says, um, uh, it says, for instance, Part 90 radios that permit an operator to use external controls to program and transmit on frequencies other than those programmed by the manufacturer or service or maintenance personnel are generally prohibited. So, so that means pretty much any radio that's equipped with a keypad that has the capability of being programmed in the field on that radio is is prohibited it's not allowed on well, a part we can 90 say that, radio but is is that right i mean does permit an operator to use external controls to program and transmit on frequencies that sounds to me like they're saying keypad programmability like yeah. being able to yeah. key in a frequency on the fly i mean i wish they would have said it the way i said it instead of saying operator it's, to use external controls be, it sounds like it's a little it's open to a little bit of interpretation you know and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure somewhere else in the document they spell out what they mean by external controls I didn't see but, that. now I didn't read all of the back and forth that's gone on over the past year but uh, I didn't see a, a better definition of external controls but I know that they, they may want to clarify that in this day of uh, day and age of technology and apps and software programmability. I mean, it, it, it's getting easier and easier to program these radios. Software is widely available. It'd be nice if they'd start writing these things out in plainer English uh, as well. <laughs> I think that would help a little bit. Um, I mean, from what I have gleaned from this, it, it sounds like they are not just going after that UV5R+, Plus, but I think it opens the door to them going after all Chinese radios because, or all Chinese radios that have keypads because technically most all of them that I know of are capable of being programmed out in the field or through external controls, so to speak. A lot of them are, absolutely. And if that's where they're drawing the line, part and from the way they describe the UV5R in this document, it looks like they're saying this is a Part 90 type accepted radio mm -hmm. transmitting on frequencies that are not authorized within Part 90, and it allows operators to key in those frequencies, them, they, those unauthorized frequencies themselves. So if, if that's what it boils down to, then... It, Baofeng is not alone. There are, other yeah, brands there are other brands that have this same issue. 
Deze middags zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De Daily Minutes komt tot stand mede dankzij de stichting Scope Hobbyfonds. Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Echo Tango Echo. En microfoon naar het toer.